Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesya Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadhada Shri Vasadi Ghor Bhaktavinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Ghor Bhaktavinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Ghor Bhaktavinda Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Ghor Bhaktavrinda Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 
कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Nittai Bo, Hari Bo.
जय जय प्रभु 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 जय प्रभु कौर प्रेम नंदे हरि बो नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पिस्ताय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचरिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चर्च दे सतरिणे ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय So reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, Chapter Four, Transcendental Knowledge, Text Number Sixteen. Karma ni a karma ya pasyet. Karma ni a karma ya pasyet. अकर्मणि च कर्मया अकर्मणि च कर्मया सबुदिमन मनुष्येशु सबुदिमन मनुष्येशु संयुक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत संयुक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत सिक्सटीन फोर सिक्सटीन या गॉट इट Maybe is that what? Oh, four eighteen. Sorry, four eighteen. Four eighteen. Karma ni a karma ya pasyet. Karma ni a karma ya pasyet. अकर्मणि च कर्मया अकर्मणि च कर्मया सा बुद्धिमान मनुष्येशु सा बुद्धिमान मनुष्येशु सा युक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत संयुक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत कर्मणि अकर्मया पश्यत अकर्मणि च कर्मया सबुद्धिमान मनुष्येशु संयुक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत कर्मणि अकर्मया पश्यत अकर्मणि च कर्मया सा बुद्धिमान मनुष्येशु सा युक्ता कृष्णा कर्मा कृत Anybody else would like to chant? Karmani akarmaya pasyat. 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 Kar
Akarmani Chakarmaya Sabudiman Manusheshu Sayukta Krishna Karma Krit Karmani Akarma Yapashet Karmani Akarma Sabudiman Manusheshu Sayukta Krishna Karma Krit Nitai Priya Karmani Akarma Yapashe Karmani Akarma Yapashe Akarmani Chakarma Yapashe Like the chant. Karmani Akarmaya Pashe Akarmani Chakarmaya Sabudi Mamanu Shesu Sayukta Krishna Karma Krek Karmani in action, in action. Akarma. akarma in action, in action. Ya. ya one who, one who. Pashyat. Pashyat. observes, observes. Akarmani. akarmani in inaction, in cha. cha also, also. Karma. karma fruitive action, fruitive action. Ya. ya one who, one who. Sa, Sa, he, he Budiman, is intelligent, Manusheshu, in human society. Sa, he, Yukta, is in the transcendental position. Krishna Karma Krit. Although engaged in all activities. Translation. One who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged in all sorts of activities. You can repeat. One who sees in action, in action. An action in inaction is intelligent among men. And he is in the transcendental position. Although engaged in all sorts of activities. Just a minute, I lost my <laughs> uh, Krishna. I'll get it. I <laughs> just got my phone is on Let's see. All right, purport by Srila Prabhupada. 
A person acting in Krishna consciousness is naturally free from the bonds of karma. His activities are all performed for Krishna. Therefore, he does not enjoy or suffer any of the effects of work. Consequently, he is intelligent in human society, even though he is engaged in all sorts of activities for Krishna. Akarma means without reaction to work. The impersonalist ceases fruitive activities out of fear so that the resultant action may not be a stumbling block on the path of self-realization. But the personalist knows rightly his position as, a, as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he engages himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness. Because everything is done for Krishna, he enjoys only transcendental happiness in the discharge of this service. Those who are engaged in this process are known to be without desire for personal sense gratification. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanjena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Tina Bandhu Chagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Kaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Lord Krishna is explaining an important point here in the Bhagavad Gita. He is explaining the difference, the different mode towards action for both the devotee and the non-devotee or when we say non-devotee we mean actually particularly the impersonalists those who follow 
we may call it Advaita Mark or uh, some other kind of teaching like this. Uh, so understanding the importance of action in Krishna consciousness, acting for Krishna. A devotee will engage in all kinds of activities. Devotees are, the, the process of Krishna consciousness is not to be idle, but is to be actively engaged in all kinds of activity for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita on a battlefield and he's encouraging Arjuna in the process of fighting, of acting for Krishna, to fight for Krishna. That is also a transcendental activity. Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to engage in activities. Lord Krishna is not only speaking to Arjuna, but he's speaking to all of us. He wants all of us to be engaged in activities. He doesn't want us to give up activities, but he wants us to engage in activities which are on the transcendental platform. And therefore he's describing the, the thinking of a devotee, that he sees action in inaction and inaction in action. Sometimes it's uh, people are a little bewildered. What is being described here? What is meant here? What is when, when we talk about action in inaction? Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So action in inaction. That this is describing the impersonalist, those who are following what we would call the Mayavadi philosophy. They're trying to stop activities. They want to give up activities. They like to stop all activities. And they think activities are going to create karma and karma will keep them in the material world. So they try to stop all activities. They try to go away from the world. They like to go into seclusion. Sometimes uh, we see yogis do like that. They go to the Himalayas and they find a cave and they like to go in <laughs> they like to go in the cave to get away from all the disturbances which are there in normal society and so krishna consciousness is going where there are people we like to go there to to be with the people not to go away from the world, but to go into the world and to go where the people are so that we can engage in Krishna conscious activities and we can show them the proper actions for Krishna conscious devotees. The impersonalists, they shy away from all of these things. Just like 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Benares. And Benares is traditionally a place of Mayavada people. The people there, they're generally all devotees to Lord Shiva, but they're not Vaishnavas. They're impersonalists. And they follow the line of Shankara Acharya. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone there as a sannyasi, and he was also, he had taken sannyas in the line of Shankar Acharya and he was in Benares and he was chanting and dancing. And the other Mayavadis who were there, who were, they were all under the leadership of a sannyasi called Prakashananda Saraswati. 
So Mayavadi sannyasis, they are all from Brahmana families. They have to be in order to be sannyasis. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was also from a Brahmana family. And he had also taken sannyas in that line of Shankaracharya. All he took from uh, Ke uh, Keshava Bharati Maharaj. Now Keshava Bharati Maharaj gave him sannyas, but actually Keshava Bharati Maharaj was a devotee. Although he had taken initiation in the line of Shankaracharya, he was a devotee also. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu selected him to give him his sannyas. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Banaras and he was simply chanting and dancing. He's chanting Hare Krishna and dancing. Now other Mayavadi sannyasis, they were studying Vedanta. They study the Vedanta Sutra, which is a book written by Srila Vyasadev. Veda means the knowledge, and so Vedanta means the end of knowledge, and it's a sutra. Sutra means condensed. Condensed is put into a very brief form. So, just like sometimes people write books or they write poems, you don't really know what it's the meaning. You have to ask the author, what is the meaning? So, Vedanta Sutra is a bit like that. People don't really know what the meaning of the Vedanta Sutra is. And they read it and it, it's very difficult to understand. You can read. Banu Swami has translated the Vedanta Sutra commentary of one of the Vaishnava Acharyas, actually the commentary by Baladeva Vijabhusan. And so you can read it for yourself and you can see it's not light reading. It's very heavy and it's very deeply philosophical. So the Mayavadi sannyasis, they spend their time studying Vedanta Sutra because this is how they are trained, this is what they are taught to understand Vedanta, the end of knowledge. And uh, Shankaracharya, he, he wrote a commentary on Vedanta Sutra and Mayavadi sannyasis will read that also and try to understand more the meaning of the Vedanta Sutra. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there in Banaras, he was doing Sankirtan. And the other Mayavadi sannyasis, they were all studying Vedanta. So they were, the, the Mayavadi sannyasis, they said, this Chaitanya, he is also initiated as a sannyasi in our line, but he's not studying Vedanta. And they say he must be a sentimentalist. And they said that just chanting, singing and dancing, this is just sentimental. They don't understand that the Sankirtan movement is completely transcendental. And certainly when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chanting Hare Krishna, it was the highest level of devotional service. He was chanting Hare Krishna in the mood of love of Krishna. Although he is Krishna himself, he is chanting in glorification of Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu later on got the opportunity to meet with the Mayavadi sannyasis. And they, were, they asked him, you know, why don't you also study Vinanta with us? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to them, well, you know, I already understand Vedanta. But the way you explain it is very confusing, very complicated. 
So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained to them the actual meaning of Vedanta. And they all accepted, they all agreed when they heard Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's explanation of Vedanta. He explained how the living entities are all eternally part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and that they're meant to be engaged in his service. And they all agreed by the association, by the influence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the Mayavadi sannyasis agreed whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying. And they all chanted the Hare Krishna mantra. And after they chanted the Hare Krishna mantra, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took prasadam with them. Because he th they've chanted Hare Krishna, now they're devotees. Usually we won't take prasadam with the Mayavadi sannyasis, the impersonalist Mayavadi. We don't like to associate with them. But because it's chanted the Hare Krishna mantra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took prasadam with them. He understood. Now they are devotees, so we can chant Hare Krishna. So, we want to understand that devotees, they engage in, they engage in activities for the pleasure of the Lord. Those who are not devotees, they try to avoid activities because they think any activities which they're doing will simply cause some karmic reaction. Karmic reactions means bondage to the material world. And the goal is to get out from this world. We want liberation. So, they go and they, they will try to avoid all activities. In this way they try to perform inaction. They don't want to, to do anything. They will simply sit and meditate on the Brahman. And they simply sit and contemplate the Brahman. This is the business of the impersonalists. They're engaged in meditation and they will be sitting in some quiet place away from everyone where there's no disturbance and they want to just simply sit and they, th they think this is inaction and in this way no karma. But Lord Krishna is describing there is action in inaction. Although they have stopped activities, there's still going to be some action. Just like you may sit and contemplate the Brahman, but you're still going to breathe. You can't stop breathing. And so in the course of your breathing, there's some activity there. And you're still going to sometimes drink water, I don't think you're going to do full fasting for very long. You know, you want to maybe reduce the eating. And, and they do. The impersonalists, they will do great austerities. They won't eat much. They will eat very frugal. And they won't say anything. They try to stop everything. They try to stop all activities, but it's impossible to stop activities. In fact, earlier in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna had explained that all, all men are forced to act helplessly due to the impulses of the modes of nature. No one can refrain from doing something forever. You're going to do something. You, you may be sitting, but how still can you sit? You, you move a little bit here and there, right? 
there's going to be some activity there and that breeds more reactions. So although we're trying to stop activities, there's still going to be reactions because we still have some karma. You're trying to stop activities, but you still have some karma there waiting. It's going to come. It's going to come upon us. So, on the other hand, you've got the devotees. Now, the impersonal is they are action in inaction. They're trying to stop activities, but they're getting actions, they're getting reactions. For the devotee, however, it's inaction in action. The devotee is engaged in all kinds of activities, particularly hearing and chanting, and serving, doing many different activities like worshipping the deities, cooking prasadam and offering to the deities, keep taking care of the temple building. There's many things, going out for programs, going out to different places to perform some propaganda activities. Devotees are doing many different activities, but there's no reaction. So the devotee's work is described as inaction in action. Although they're engaged, just like Arjuna is going to fight. He's going to fight in the battle. One of the reasons why Arjuna didn't want to fight was he's worried about getting reactions, sinful reactions, because he's taking part in the battle and he will kill and injure people. So Arjuna was worried about the sinful reactions. But Lord Krishna is describing here that there is inaction in action. When the work is performed in the right consciousness, then there is no reaction. And that right consciousness, it can be karma yoga, or even better than karma yoga is bhakti yoga. That you do the work on behalf of Krishna. Whatever you're doing, you do it for the pleasure of Krishna. We don't do it just simply for our own sake, sake, but we're doing it service for Krishna. And in this way, there's no reaction. Sometimes we give the example, just like the soldier may fight, and he fights for his country. He, the, maybe the country is at war, they have to fight, they have to fight against some uh, maybe terrorist elements or rebel elements in the country and they have to go and fight and kill people. So they may be considered heroes for fighting and killing the rebels. But if the same soldier comes home and he goes drinking and he gets in, drunk and then he fights with people and he kills someone, then it's a crime and he goes to jail. And he may say, no, look, when I was fighting, you gave me medals. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing the same thing, I'm still fighting, but you're going to put me in jail or you're going to hang me for being a murderer. But there's a big difference. Although the activity appears to be the same, you know, the man said, no, I was just fighting and killing. You know, it's the same fighting and killing. But one was done on behalf of the nation. On be it was a duty to be performed on behalf of the country. And the other was done just due to your own intoxicated and bewildered state of mind. And so you get punished for that. So similarly, when we act for the pleasure of Lord Krishna, then there's no reactions.
we want to come to that transcendental platform, to act on the transcendental platform without thought for our own sense gratification. That is the nature of devotional service. De devotional service, we're speaking about pure devotional service. It should be performed simply for the satisfaction of Lord Krishna. We're not thinking about our own self. The scriptures describe that devotional service is ahaitaki and apratihata. It is without motivation. You know, working in the material world, we're all motivated. We have to have, there has to be some motivation. Otherwise, nobody would work. If we said, we're not going to pay you anymore. Just work, just for pleasure. Who's going to do it? You know, nobody's going to work for pleasure. We work only because there's some remuneration. You're going to get salary, you get the pay. If, if there's not that reward, we won't work. Why? You think, why I should bother? <laughs> just for pleasure. My plan, I'm getting pleasure at home. Why I should go and work? And so, we have to understand devotional service is of a different nature. That there is pleasure in performing devotional service. But one has to experience, one has to have a taste for that pleasure. And that taste comes simply by engaging in the activities and hearing we have to also hear about Krishna and about the importance of proper activities. Action has to be performed. You cannot stop action. Just like when, when people don't have a job, they don't, they don't you, you, can, what, you still do something. You're going to clean the house, you're going to do laundry, maybe you'll paint your house or maybe do you, certainly there'll be a lot of things to do. You're not going to just do nothing. You have to do something. So we want to work for Krishna, to come to that position that whatever we are doing, we're doing it for the satisfaction of Lord Krishna. This is later on described in Bhagavad Gita in a, a, a well-known verse. Lord Krishna says, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform, do them as an offering to me. Just like before we eat, a devotee will offer the food to Krishna. We want to offer the food to Krishna. We don't just simply cook and eat. But a devotee will cook and then offer for the pleasure of Krishna. The offering is the process by which we become freed of the reactions. If we just simply cook and eat, then there will be karma, there will be reactions. But if we cook, and offer to Krishna, then we eat, then we have karma-free food. Food without karma. And it's quite a different thing. So that, that consciousness is there in all of our activities, whatever we do. Just like you have a family, we have children, you, do, you bring them up in transcendental consciousness. We bring them up for the pleasure of Krishna, to bring them to be nice devotees of Krishna, teaching them how to come to the temple and how to worship Krishna, how to bow down before the deities. Like this, we, we like to give Krishna consciousness to everyone 
in different positions. And doesn't matter what position one is in, we can take up Krishna consciousness. You may be in the family life, you may be single, or you may be renounced, but everyone can connect their activities for the satisfaction of Krishna. Working in a job, we can also work for Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explained that those devotees who are working in the factory or in the offices, but who are using the fruit of their work to maintain their families in Krishna consciousness and who are contributing also to the Krishna consciousness movement, he said, then they're actually in the renounced order of life. They're actually renounced people. Although they may be living in the family life, but they're renounced because they're sacrificing the results for the pleasure of Krishna. Just like people will purchase flowers. Now in the material world, the young man may purchase flowers and give them to the young girl or his wife or whatever. He, give, he wants to make a present like that for the pleasure. But in Krishna consciousness, we will purchase the flowers and offer them to Krishna. He'll give them to his wife to offer to the deity at home that she can offer them to Krishna or she will bring to the temple and offer them in the temple to Krishna. In this way, everything is purified. It becomes purified by offering to Krishna. We want to understand this process by which actions become inaction. And that is Krishna consciousness. When you act, for the pleasure of Krishna, there's no reaction. But if you try to stop activities, you won't be successful. There will simply be more activities. You cannot just simply stop activities. So this point is being made here in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna wants Arjuna to understand because Arjuna was thinking he wanted to avoid the activity. He didn't want to fight. But Krishna is telling him, you may not fight, but you're not going to stop activities. You're still going to be active and your activities will bring reactions because you're not doing duty, responsibilities, duty are there. You have, we have to recognize what is our duty. We all have some different responsibilities. Um, as spirit souls, we are all meant to be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. And we are all meant to chant the holy name. That's very important in the Kali Yuga. Nobody can say that, oh, I don't have to chant. Everyone should chant the holy name. That's the duty of all living, all humans, in the human form of life. We have this opportunity to become God conscious. And it comes about very quickly when we begin to chant the holy name. And chanting the holy name brings us to the transcendental platform. Now, you may sing mundane music songs, that, that is just going to give more karma. It's just going to keep you on the material platform and will generate more karma. But when we sing songs for the pleasure of Krishna, particularly the chanting of the holy name, then there's no karma, there's no reactions to that. Rather, we come to the transcendental platform, the spiritual platform. And that spiritual platform, that is eternal. We can continue 
day after day, year after year, birth after birth, we can continue to chant the holy name and to take pleasure in that activity. So service to Krishna is not something temporary, but it's eternal. We're serving Krishna here and we go on to serve Krishna in some other place in the future. When we leave this body, we simply go on to serve Krishna in some other place. We may go back to Godhead or we may take birth some other place, in some other universe. But we will continue to do service for Krishna. That is eternal. That is our Sanatana Dharma, the eternal religion. We cannot avoid activities, but we want to understand what is the best kind of activity. Sometimes, often the common people, they're engaged in activities against the scripture. They're not doing simply karma, but they're doing vikarma, acts against scriptures, killing animals, taking intoxication, gambling, and illicit connections with the other sex. And in this way, they're engaging in activities which are vikarmic, which take us into the lower species of life which put us into hellish conditions. So that is vikarmic activities. And a lot of people are engaged in these kinds of activities. Then there is karma. Karma is activities by which we can act according to the Vedas, according to the scriptures, acts which will allow us to enjoy the material world to perform activities according to the scriptural injunctions which will allow us to enjoy material prosperity. Just like we want prosperity, we want to enjoy long life, good health, wealth, these things. So we act according to the scriptures, eat the proper food and act according to the pro proper principles of civilized human life. Not taking intoxication and not wasting our valuable time in doing mundane activities like gambling. So karmic activities allow people to enjoy but higher than karmic activities is akarma. Akarma means no reaction. And that platform is achieved when our activities are connected in Krishna consciousness. That we're acting simply for the pleasure of Krishna. How do we know what is for the pleasure of Krishna? We have to be guided. Just like Arjuna was guided by Lord Krishna directly. So we don't have the direct presence of Krishna, but we have the direct presence of Krishna's devotees. Uh, the great Acharyas also have given us their realizations and their instructions. Just like Srila Prabhupada gave many instructions for us how we can serve Krishna, what we should offer to Krishna, and how we can keep ourselves busy in the service of Krishna. It is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam about Swayambhuva Manu, how he lived a very long life. You know, and there are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. So you. Um, Manu's life is, is long compared to our life. It's not very long compared to Brahma's life, but compared to our life it's long. So what did Manu do in the course of his many years as Manu, as the father of mankind? 
he engaged himself in hearing the glories of the Supreme Lord and he was also writing and this and he was also studying and learning and writing his realizations just like we have the book Manu Samhita so Manu Samhita was the book written by Manu law book for mankind and every one of us have this opportunity to use our time in this way to read the books we want to read all of Prabhupada's books in your lifetime you definitely want to finish reading Prabhupada's books, all of the books which Prabhupada had written. Before you go on to read other books, read Prabhupada's books. And also write about your realizations. We have many ladies also who write very nice articles. You can read. There are many things like Back to Godhead, there's also the Dandabats, which come out, comes out regularly. And there's uh, also, a, 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 every week there's something which they send with different articles by different devotees. There's so many areas, so many publications you can contribute to. And you can publish your own book if you like to write something, you know. But Prabhupada encourages the devotees to write, write something in glorification of Krishna. Just like we had the other day, we had Jananda Goswami's Vyasa Puja. At that time you can write an offering. And you can write for Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja and Prabhupada's disappearance. And we do. We're encouraged everyone has to write an offering for Prabhupada and for on his disappearance also and just like some we're having classes at different times so devotees are all encouraged to speak their realizations you know sometimes we see here in Malaysia it's a bit conservative the South Indian influence they think only the men should speak but women can also speak and women can also preach. Indeed in Mayapur, they have, a, I think, one or two days a week when women give class every week. So, you know, we're not, we don't mind, you know. Women can also speak. And they can also preach and write as well. And they do. We have some very scholarly ladies in our Krishna consciousness movement. They're very realized. They write very nicely. And so we have also, of course, women doing many things. That, you know, we have women GBC. We have a woman guru. We have women temple presidents. The London temple Bhaktivedanta Manor, the temple president is Vishaka Mataji. And like that, you know, there's... So women shouldn't just sit and think, no, I'm a woman, you just be quiet. <laughs> no, women can also write and preach and things. And uh, the men should also, particularly those who are initiated, twice initiated, they have to take the responsibility to speak regularly. And offering arti, just like offer going on the altar from time to time. Everyone should take the turn to offer arti. Otherwise, what's the purpose of being initiated as a brahmana? You're a brahmana and you never offer arti, you never give class. It's not very good. You know, we have to, we, we're expecting to do these things. This is our life service to Krishna and there's no karma for that. Alright, are there any questions? Yes Prabhu, thank you Prabhu. So how we can uh, relate it into the 
with the Achitya Veda Aveda Tattva. So I couldn't link this. So how can we relate action and inaction to Achintya Beda Beda Tattva? Lord Chaitanya has given us this philosophy of Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, that everything is inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. So, devotional service is action, but it's different. Right? Because there's no reactions. It's one. It's, act, it's, it's action, but it's without reaction. It's one with karmic activities, but it's different because there's no reactions from devotional service. So in this way, it's one and different. Yeah, we're performing activities. But we say this is transcendental activity. People may say, oh, you're eating. No, I'm eating prasada. Right? It's transcendental. Oh, you're working. Yes, I'm working for Krishna. Transcendental. It's one with ordinary people, but at the same time, different. Oh, you're doing business, making money. Yes, for Krishna. Everything is for Krishna. So, they think, they think oh, you're just the same as all of us. We're also working. No, we're different. We're one with you, but at the same time different because we're doing it for Krishna. We're giving the results for the pleasure of Krishna. It's different. So like that, one and different. Right? Any other question? So, any matajis ready to give class? Yeah? <laughs> well, university lecturers there they should be able to talk. They talk every day, talk to their classes. Not very difficult for them to give a class. Women should be more active. You should have women's programs. You get more people involved. You have programs. More ladies will come. You get the ladies together in the Middle East. Women are very active. So many programs going on. All the ladies' programs. They meet regularly. They do a lot of activities. So we encourage all of you, you know, try to arrange more, to get together with people. Even if you just do it on the internet, you know, if you just do it in a, on, a, on a mobile network, then in that way you can meet people and then later on you can always bring them physically to come in touch with Krishna Consciousness. You can meet people on the internet, just like so many people, you know, oh I met this girl on the internet, you know, <laughs> couples get together on the internet, they meet each other and then they arrange marriages and this. So in the same way, we can bring devotees to Krishna Consciousness. Mm -hmm. If we do oh, in action, in action, shouldn't it come with no Vaishnava Aparat? What? Shouldn't it come with no Vaishnava Aparat? Well, of course. 
A devotee will be is very conscious not to do Vaishnav Aparat. But we said simply activities, not not talking about Vaishnav Aparad, that's a different thing. Aparad, offenses, that's like, you know, criticizing people. You criticize someone because of their birth, or you criticize someone because of their past activities. So that's, a, that's Aparad. So we're careful to avoid that. Yeah. I wanted to um I mean uh so when Srila Prabhupada was compassionate to Mataji's right, like when he gave qualifications of Brahma and Sage and everything. Um that was the element of compassion in it, but um did he was there any element of um because there was a demand of choicelessness and that's why he actually engaged the ladies in all the services? There was a demand, what? For was there an element of demand or choicelessness, like, you know, the ladies wanted to be engaged and therefore Srila Prabhupada, I mean, it was a... Well, Srila Prabhupada saw how in the Western countries that women are on the same level as the men, which is quite different from India. You know, you go to India and it's really a man's world. You don't see women so much there, you know. Somehow, I don't know, but when, when uh, you're in India, you see a lot of men everywhere. The market, full of men. You know, generally you go in the market, you see there's a lot of women, you know. But somehow in India, wherever the market is, it's all men. You know, everywhere men, you know, men doing everything. And where are the women? And, well, there are women around, but you don't see them a lot, you know. It's quite different. But in the West, it's quite a different thing. That everywhere, men and women are there. And they're mixed up together. And Prabhupada saw that this is a very different place from India. And that was why he initiated women. He never thought women would come. When he was in India and waiting to go to America, he didn't think women are going to come to join. But when they did come, then he thought, well, okay, I accepted. And he initiated them and gave them the chance of Krishna consciousness. Of course, with some restrictions, the women, women have some differences from men. And so that was understood. But Prabhupada saw women also doing a lot of service. They also go out and distribute books. And Prabhupada got, he saw, he saw some of the lady devotees doing very nicely and helping him so much for the Krishna consciousness movement. Malati, for example, uh, if you read, I was reading Shamsundar Prabhu's book and he was just talking about how Srila Prabhupada was laying the foundation stone for the temple of the Vedic planetarium in Mayapur. So it was, it was a nice ceremony. It was held 19, like 1972, I think very early on. There were not a lot of people there in Mayapur at that time. Anyway, they had the ceremony to lay the foundation stone and Prabhupada's godbrothers came. These children should be controlled, you know. So Prabhupada Prabhupada uh, organized the ceremony and his godbrothers came and uh, there were sannyasis, several sannyasis were there from Iskon and there were Prabhupada's godbrothers, they were all sannyasis with the brahmacharis. And so uh, it came time to give a talk and who should give the talk? Prabhupada, out of all the devotees who were there, Prabhupada asked Malati to talk. You know, it was, 
it was a bit surprising, but Prabhupada said, to Malati, you speak. So Malati had to stand up in front of all the sannyasis, in front of all the people, Prabhupada's god-brothers, and in front of Srila Prabhupada as well, and she had to give a talk. Hmm. So, I mean, that was one example that Prabhupada, uh, some, he, he, he took it, uh, took help from these ladies that these women could, they were, they were very uh, helpful to him in establishing the Krishna consciousness movement. And he appreciated their efforts very much. And so, yeah, Prabhupada gave women a lot of help. Sometimes in India, you know, the people, the audience would be very noisy, and even Prabhupada couldn't get them to be quiet. But as soon as he brought a woman on the stage to give a talk, everyone became silent. You know, they bring the young woman, you know, with her sari, you know, and Western body and that. And all the men immediately became quiet, you know. They're all looking. And so sometimes he would use the ladies like that. Okay, any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.